The CDC has added the loss of smell and taste to the symptoms indicating possible infection by this novel coronavirus. Right now, researchers at VCU Health's Smell and Taste Disorder Center are looking into that very connection. Joining me now to talk about it is Professor Emeritus Richard Costanzo. Professor, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Bill. Tell us off the start, how prevalent is the loss of smell or taste in the general population that is independent of any infection like the coronavirus? Yeah, so surprisingly, about 13% or one in eight uh, people have some sort of a smell loss. It may be slight, it may be significant, uh, but and about 3% have a total loss of smell, which we call anosmia. And, and so is, and is that from a, a trauma? Is that genetic or is it almost always something like an infection? Well, it could be a variety of reasons. Um, head trauma is one cause of smell and usually that's permanent. Um, viruses and uh, in nasal infections can cause the loss of smell. Even medications and sometimes chemotherapy uh, treatments can cause a loss, a loss of smell. And it almost seemed uh, anecdotally we'd been hearing, oh, people mentioned they lost their taste and smell, and then all of a sudden it became clear that that was one of these symptoms from COVID-19. Uh, what does it say about how virulent, if you'll pardon that expression, the, 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 this particular coronavirus might be, uh, if in fact it does impact taste and smell, or is that just, is that common with, with the, any other kind of virus? Well, most viruses uh, do affect your smell and taste uh, for a temporary time, and sometimes it can be permanent. Uh, with this particular virus, reports were coming out of okay. Asia and Europe that a very significant number of patients who were infected had lost their sense of smell and taste. And more recently, we've discovered that uh, the smell and taste symptom occurs even before the COVID symptoms, before fatigue or of trouble breathing or any of the other symptoms. So it looks like smell and taste loss may be an early warning sign of the virus. So what does it mean to you as a researcher? I know you have a survey underway right now. What does it mean that you have an active uh, coronavirus in, in impacting taste and smell right now? Uh, that's something that in real time, as far as your research, it must be kind of extraordinary that you can actually talk to people, hey, you just had this specific disease and we want to hear from you. Yeah, it's an opportunity for scientists around the world to uh, study this disease and, and see more about, uh, learn more about viruses and how they impact the smell and taste. But in our particular survey, we're very interested in uh, recruiting people who have noticed a sudden loss of smell and taste. Uh, the CDC just issued guidance and added that to one of their six symptoms. The early detection of a smell and taste loss is now important enough to warrant you talking to your physician and possibly getting tested. And have you been able to find out yet, uh, either from the early results of the survey or just in your general research, uh, is the loss of taste and smell, particularly from a, an infection like this one, is it likely to be permanent or are the, does the majority of, of sufferers get those, those senses back? Well, that's a good question. Most of the people that come to a clinic like ours have a permanent loss and they're, they're seeking some sort of a treatment. In this particular case, we don't know if it's gonna be permanent. Our study is a longitudinal study. And so we'll be able to tell uh, after time by uh, repeat testing or contacting individuals to see if they get their smell back. And uh, you've actually even helped dev or from devised a, uh, something that can actually help people um, almost like a cochlear implant, but for smell, is that right? That's true. Uh, many of the patients that come to see us that have a permanent loss, there's often, there isn't a therapy that we can give them to get their smell back. There's no surgical procedure. And at VCU, we've invented this new device, which is kind of like a cochlear implant together with uh, colleagues here at VCU. Uh, we are working on developing this to the point where we may actually have a way to restore smell like we can restore hearing in deaf people. That's amazing stuff. Now, I want to put up, the, if we have that graphic for the survey that you want everybody nationally to take or at least check in on, uh, I believe it's go.vcu.edu backslash COVID smell. Is that right? If we don't have the graphic up there, we'll, we'll certainly put it on our, on our website afterwards. Uh, yes, we are, we are very interested in people who have noticed the loss in sense of smell, and we want to track them and hopefully 
we'll learn enough that we can share with physicians and give guidance in the future uh, to help uh, physicians treat patients with this disorder. All right, we appreciate your time so much, Dr. Richard Costanzo, Professor Emeritus at VCU. We appreciate it and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Bill. All right.